We've all seen the memes. Tapestries with text proclaiming how great medieval workers had it compared to us lowly modern folk. Claims of vacation day abundance and shorter workdays get traction precisely because they sound too good to be true. Well, are they too good to be true? Can it really be the case that serfs toiling in muddy fields during a time of the plague were living large compared to office workers stuck in traffic? They say we spend 54 hours a year in traffic, but surely that's more if you live in Los Angeles. Medieval European society was radically different to our modern age after all, so it makes sense that their attitudes to work and industry would be alien to us. Then again, they weren't as knowledgeable as us, nor had the high standard of living that we enjoy daily. Things like electricity, medicine, internet, and of course, all-you-can-eat buffets. So is the grass always greener on the other side, or are 21st century employees stuck in Plato's cave? We're going to settle the case once and for all. So it's time to learn how history works as we investigate who had it better, medieval peasants or us. Exhibit A, Industry. First things first, let's set out the most popular jobs that exist in both time periods. Nowadays, most of middle-class society works in intelligence fields, things like corporate work and sales, which didn't exist between 5th and late 15th century Europe. Yet the most common jobs in America have a striking resemblance to employment opportunities during 1,000 years of the Dark Ages. These include cashier, food prepper, stocking associate, laborer, janitor, construction worker, bookkeeper, server, medical assistant, bartender. Pretty much all of these were around during the times of Knights and Dragons, but under different names. A bartender worked in a tavern, a bookkeeper worked for nobles, and laborers were needed to build castles and city walls instead of conservatories and man caves. However, some jobs are no longer around. A sin eater had one of the worst jobs of all. They absorbed the sins of the deceased to help their spirits go to heaven, though sometimes this meant coming at the cost of their own damnation. There's no employee benefit on earth or heaven that could compensate for that. We don't need town criers in the media age, and the leech collection industry ain't what it used to be. The less said about the groom of the stool, the better. In any case, what these examples show us is that the peasants definitely had the worst jobs, but that for the most part, we still do the same types of work. So even though we can chalk one point up for the modern era, it's worth learning from how past work went obsolete with new technology. Maybe future generations will look at your day job the same way you're looking at a sin eater or seamstress. After all, automation has always threatened to replace workers, yet it seems the modern jobs that risk getting the axe aren't so much the laboring ones, but the knowledge ones. According to Business Insider, the industries that will most likely be downsized through AI include IT, media, finance, and even customer service. This means being a web developer might be safe now, but when robots come, we'll still need a bartender to pour us a cold one. So let's call it a draw for now. Exhibit B, Healthcare. Now let's talk about one of the most contentious employee benefits of all. If you're watching from Europe, then you're probably thinking that this is a clear victory for the 21st century. Americans, though, will see this differently. So who had it better? Let's start with some cold, hard data. In general, medieval peasants had shorter life expectancy because their medical technology wasn't as advanced. Death from childbirth was common for women, with children not being guaranteed to make it to 10 years old. Germ theory wasn't around, so infections were more likely to be fatal and simple illness was not easily avoided. And that's before discussing how the Black Death wiped out 65% of the population with an especially vile, painful series of symptoms. The only real access to healthcare came from the charitable work of abbeys, churches, and your local barber slash surgeon who could perform basic procedures without anesthetic, of course. Not that they really knew what they were doing. Herbal remedies were as effective as modern-day alternative medicine, though we no longer need potions to remove devils and goblins. We just need magic crystals and homeopathy to remove bad energy. This means medieval people had it tough right out of the gate, but it wasn't all doom and gloom. Recent studies have been debating whether the bubonic plague is as bad as it sounds. Apparently, mathematicians miscounted a few million or so deaths. In any case, many peasants were farmers, which meant more people had direct access to fresh flora and fauna. Sure, there'd be more bugs, and maybe the lamb cutlets weren't so clean, but some might say this is better than modern food standards. Eating is easier in our time, maybe too easy. Obesity wasn't an issue 1,000 years ago, nor were the cancer risks from processed foods. Our medieval ancestors didn't suffer from smoking problems either, given that tobacco only came to the West when Columbus touched down in America. And how could we forget the deaths that are caused by modern work? Stress is a killer. Strokes, heart failure, and suicide aren't uncommon for office workers. In fact, dying at your desk from overwork is so common in Japan that they even have a name for it, Kuroshi. Studies are showing that this type of phenomenon is coming to the West. 
Medieval wasn't so stressful. Religious holidays and harvest festivals gave days off throughout the calendar. Plus, the strong Christian faith meant working on Sunday was off-limits. Seasonal downtime gave more opportunities for leisurely pursuits. Apparently, life before our 40-hour work week had between 215 to 245 days off a year. So if you don't have access to healthcare, it's easy to argue that peasants didn't have it so bad. But here's the million-dollar question. Would you rather be paywalled for cancer treatment, or would you prefer having your local priest cure your leprosy by boring a hole in your head for free? All those days off in medieval times look tempting until you have to roll the dice on getting the bubonic plague. I know what I'd choose, we've got it better for sure. We may have more diseases, but we've got more cures. It may be tempting to mock our ancestors' beliefs that disease was caused by smells when we had our own COVID-related quackery, but it's still a win for the modern age. Go us. Exhibit C, stability. Money talks, so which time period talked more? Comparatively, medieval peasants were dirt poor and severely underpaid. Fixed salaries weren't a thing, yet your wealth could be docked depending on the temperament of your feudal lord. And forget about having an agreement written on paper, it wouldn't have helped. Chances are, you wouldn't have been able to read. Then again, they had fewer outgoings plus no credit card debt. The old joke has it that the village tramp has a better net worth than the town mayor. We all have a friend who spent too much of their money on useless crap. And if you don't have that friend, then you are that friend. Medieval peasants didn't have financial temptations like Starbucks coffee, Netflix, and the latest iPhone. They didn't have entertainment to splurge on, whereas it's normal for us to go to the movies, go to restaurants, and go on vacation. No doubt, you're thinking we've got more expenses but higher income. But there's more than meets the eye. For starters, the agrarian-based society meant living standards were tied to the harvest. Pretty much everyone worked together in the same area. There was no chance that an outside industry could screw you over. Whereas many hardworking people in our lifetime had their life savings decimated from a housing bubble caused by the finance industry. Plus, if a harvest was especially bountiful, a peasant could sell their surplus for a quick buck like a yearly bonus. On the flip side, a poor harvest meant dying of hunger. The economic hardship was more extreme. By contrast, our agriculture has better control of influencing factors thanks to things like refrigeration, greenhouse, and pesticides. Still, a benefit of medieval society was the effectiveness of bartering. So long as you paid your taxes and church duties, you were free to trade anything for anything. This means the old farmers had a large safety net. Even when they had no money, they weren't necessarily broke. Freedom like this would be envied for those who subscribed to the wage slavery theory. Basically, the idea is that our modern capitalistic society forces people to rent their time in exchange for an exaggerated sense of financial security at the cost of your rights, privileges, and dignity. A prime example would be sweatshop workers, but no doubt you'd felt the erosion of your soul every time you've had to indulge the ego of some awful boss. At least those middle-aged peasants were freer to do what they wanted on their terms. Their decision to farm was their own. It just meant that the fallout from a bad mistake was higher. So who wins this round? The poor peasants who had more decision-making but with limited options, or the modern worker who has ample opportunity for income and luxuries so long as they decide to dance to someone else's tune? Let's call this one a tie. Exhibit D, Opportunity. Agrarian societies were slow. Technological innovation was not as rapid as in our time. Chances are you plowed the field the same way that your great-great-granddaddy plowed fields. You probably had the same plow in the same fields. Manual labor was the name of the game. Raising livestock and toiling in mud was how communities were sustained. This means the working landscape was narrower. On one hand, that's good, because it means you'll never be short of work. The skill set you'd grown up with was the same skill set that everyone else had. Should you need to uproot and move houses, you'd be safe in the knowledge that someone, somewhere, could give you a day's work shoveling manure. The lack of widespread technology also created a level playing field. Sure, the guy with the longer scythe probably cut corn faster, but it wasn't really the case that some newbie from out of town could steal your work away. A big problem with this is alternative skill sets were risky. A traveling bard would be singing for their supper till the day they died, and probably have to farm hand every now and again to keep afloat. Leaving your village was dangerous. No Google Maps or public transit to help you find accommodations, nor a local police force to catch any bandits creeping in the woods. You were more or less stuck where you were born. Venturing further in the name of work could be fatal. Meanwhile, modern folk have the privilege of working anywhere. There isn't a single person watching this video who hasn't had to at least move to another town for work on one occasion. It's common for us to change apartments, cities, and even states. Chances are, you've jumped at the chance to work abroad. Then again, plenty of you are probably happy to utilize the internet by working from home. How ironic. 
We have more opportunities for types of work, places of work, and ways to work, yet we'd rather stay where we lay our head. It would seem like a clear victory for modern workers on this front, but I think I'm going to have to give it to the peasantry for one simple reason. It took almost 1,000 years for technology to upend the medieval way of life. Until the Industrial Revolution, a worker's family had stability that could last a couple hundred of years by farming a simple plot of land. Look at us now. Tech comes and goes. Business rises and falls. Industries go bust and market bubbles burst. What's the likelihood that your job will exist in 10 years? Maybe AI will wipe it out. Maybe the resources are drying up. Maybe you're the next blockbuster in a world of Netflix. So here's another million dollar question. Would you rather have a million short-term opportunities or only have one, but it could last a millennium? I'm not saying I'd prefer to toil in a field than work in recruitment. Okay, maybe I would. But what I'm saying is medieval peasants had a degree of security that we can only dream of, even if they didn't know it at the time. Exhibit E, mobility. Medieval hierarchies were more rigid than a suit of armor after a downpour. If you were born poor, you stayed poor. The only real way to change class was to be born rich and then go broke. Breaking feudalism's shackles did not come easily. Sure, a serf could theoretically climb the ranks tonight, but in reality, it wasn't happening. A serf was already lower than a peasant in the eyes of society. Practically speaking, medieval Europe had a caste system. Thomas Cromwell was one with a few exceptions. He was born to a blacksmith father in the early Renaissance period, so he dodged the low points of the Dark Ages by a few centuries. He started off as a lawyer and rose the ranks of statehood, eventually becoming an advisor to Henry VIII. Cromwell was instrumental in forming the Church of England, which basically means he helped his boss divorce his wife Anne Bolin. Make no mistake, prying merry old England away from the Catholic Church was no small feat. It altered the religious landscape of the country forever, not bad for a guy who was never a noble. Then again, it cost him his life. King Henry VIII cut off Cromwell's head in revenge for arranging the failed marriage between the monarch and Anne of Cleves. In Cromwell's defense, he was catfished by her portrait. The point is, you can't fall from grace unless you rise to the top. At least, it's much easier to rise to the top during modern times. Theoretically, anyone can become a millionaire, right? Well, that depends. Distance between the rich and the poor has widened dramatically in the last 1,000 years. Financially speaking, the gap between medieval peasants and their lords was narrower than your standing to Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk. But not for long. Rags to riches stories are abundant in our modern age. Music, arts, science, and tech, every industry has someone whose inspirational life was turned into an Oscar-winning biopic. With public education, minimum wage laws, and employment rights, we are in a better position to make something of ourselves. This may not be perfect, but there's a lot more equality when it comes to the tools for social betterment. Even Joe Rogan credits this welfare system with helping his family get on its feet. However, the cynically minded would say this is all an illusion. It's been said that the American working class believe they are millionaires in waiting. Take the elusive presence of Russian oligarchs buying up property in wealthy cities like London, Paris, and New York. What about politicians and celebrities using offshore accounts in Monaco to avoid tax? And then there's organized crime whose networks for money laundering stretches across the globe. Can you really measure your social mobility when nefarious elites are hiding their assets? And what about the elites who pull the strings out in the open? We're living in a time where unaccountable private companies in Silicon Valley can flip a switch to decide whether or not you should have a bank account, access to the public square, or even sign online petitions. Good luck trying to reverse that decision. At least medieval peasants knew where they stood. The rich guy was whoever had the most cows. No ifs, no buts. The closest an average person has nowadays to calculating their upward trajectory is their debt, which everyone hides, and their physical possessions, which everyone fakes. For that reason, we're giving half a point to the modern times. The average person is doing better, but so are the rich and powerful. Still, the scores speak for themselves. Modern workers win, even if it was a photo finish. No doubt you demand a recount. Let us know which timeline you think is best. One of the hard parts about a video like this is that it's hard to find research on poor people in the past. If you look at the Wikipedia page for Peasant, you'll notice it's much smaller than the Wikipedia page for Julius Caesar. And the reason is that historians tend to only remember the rich. To find out why that is, go and watch our video on why historians forgot 99% of history. And don't forget to like and subscribe to keep on learning how history works.